Hey addicts, welcome back to another comic review. I'm Josh, and today we're talking about The Walking Dead issue 184, Eugene Tinkers, which, ironically enough, Eugene doesn't really tinker in this. But, uh, <laughs> getting into it, uh, I have two, well, two booklets of notes, so, uh, but I promise we won't spend, it, well, and we won't spend, I was gonna say we won't spend too much time, but we won't spend longer than we typically do. Uh, so jumping into the issue, this basically takes place uh, immediately after issue 183, uh, seeing Pamela and Rick and whoever else they have with them uh, getting back to the Commonwealth and seeing the riot break out. Uh, of course, Pamela is like, man, we got to do something. And so Rick, Dwight, Mercer, and the rest of the guards all get in there to try to break up the fight. We get to see Michonne and Elodie uh, trying to protect, um, I think the guy's name was Jerome, I, I could be wrong, uh, the guard that they uh, supposedly killed the other uh, Commonwealth civilian, uh, but we get to see Michonne come to his defense and get uh, injured in the process, nothing life-threatening, but like a broken bone and some bruising on the face, uh, but Rick is able to step in, there's a cool panel of uh, Dwight just slapping somebody to the ground, um, and uh, eventually, you know, the guards get their guns out, fire in the air, and like, we're done. You know, you guys need to go home. You know, the, uh, Pamela says that I'll get to the bottom of this. And this uh, leads to, like, the next page, which has, it doesn't really say uh, specifically how much time, but we do know a amount of time has elapsed because we get to see Michonne in the courtroom, which is very weird for The Walking Dead, but we get to see Michonne uh, kind of pleading her case to the judge, and she basically chooses um, a side that, well, she doesn't choose a side, she chooses neither, and uh, just says that, you know, we need to drop all charges on both sides. The people that the guards attacked, they're dead, and then the civilians, you know, attacked the guards, and now they're in basically the infirmary having, uh, you know, life-threatening wounds. So all in all, you know, Everybody has a little bit to blame. Let's just move past it and make sure nothing happens. And, um, you know, in this, we get to see Michonne kind of talk a little bit to um, Rick and just being how she's fully invested in the Commonwealth, uh, you know, with her daughter being there and just what she's seen the place uh, be, you know, like what they've achieved. She, you know, wants to go uh, as far as she can to save it, uh, which... Um, on the flip side of that, we get to see uh, Pamela actually talking to Lance, chewing his ass out, uh, you know, asking him, how the hell did you let it get this bad? Uh, which, you know, he's very apologetic, can't say anything else. Uh, which, this leads to Pamela looking out her window and having a what I would assume as a overreaction to seeing Rick helping out. Uh, he's cleaning up the debris and the trash that's been left from the riot. And she's really thrown back by this, but she quickly, uh, you know, kind of gets into helping clean because I got the sense that, you know, she was like, wow, I'm getting shown up by an outsider. I need to, you know, do what he's doing so I don't lose any rep. And uh, I, they give a little bit of a glance of Mercer kind of smirking. So I, it leads me to think that Mercer is really warming up to Rick's group and, you know, just seeing that he's trusting them more and more as he gets to know them. Which, speaking of Mercer, we get to see um, kind of uh, an unexpected, uh, well, I guess it's not too expected, it, uh, unexpected, it is the apocalypse, but we get to see him uh, kind of shack it up with the princess, which, uh, a, a little a little weird dialogue, as you could expect. Uh, the princess kind of has this um, teenage boy uh, kind of atmosphere of ours. She's like, was it good? It was great. It was definitely great. That's what we're going to label it as. Is this casual? Are we going to go, you know, steady? Like, basically like that. Uh, so that was really weird, but at the sense, I mean, to me, it's fine. Plus, it gives kind of Mercer more of a reason to, you know, trust Rick's group because, you know, the princess so far has been technically a part of Rick's group, even though she hasn't been with them very long. Um, along with them, uh, you know, Cleaning up the place, uh, real briefly, it's something that is, it only happens in one panel, but I think it's worth mentioning because, uh, Dwight and his girl have this kind of exchange where, uh, I'm kind of not sure if I entirely pick up on the message behind that, but it's kind of like, well, after we clean up this mess, we can clean up another, which 
I'm assuming that's basically meaning like, oh, you know, if we're cleaning up around here, then we can clean up, you know, the real problem and then just, uh, you know, reap the benefits of that. At least that's what I was kind of getting, which, uh, you know, further in the issue, I think we get confirmation of that. Uh, but uh, I'm trying to think. Oh, yes. So uh, there's a little bit of time, like, you know, time is passing at a pretty good uh Pace. I'm, I'm assuming that it's at least a couple days that we see uh, these events transpire. Um, so there's a night panel where we get to see uh, Eugene, and he's coming up to the train, and he's talking to, ah, for the life of me, I can't remember the girl he was, Stephanie, I think, uh, yeah, Stephanie, the one he was talking to on the rail. He's with her, and he's talking how he wants to link the communities together, and he thinks the best way he can do that is by getting the trains up and running, and then they can provide routes which I think Eugene's getting a little too far ahead, but, uh, I mean, we'll see where it goes. It is something that's going to help the story in a sense that, you know, he's going, if he does get this pulled off, uh, they're going to be able to basically explain how they're going to get to some places so fast, and it's going to really help when, you know, stuff starts getting um, really hectic and uh, fast, uh, faster pace. Uh and on the flip side of that, uh, I believe it's supposed to be the same night. We get to see Rick inside the Commonwealth walls, and uh, we get to see two civilians, uh, basically no names. Uh, they don't, they're not really important, I would say. But we just get to see them make little remarks of like, hey, uh, we saw you helping out. We really appreciate it. Uh, hey, is there any uh, more room at the place that you guys are from? Because I've heard a little bit about how you run things, and I'm really digging it. And Rick, you know, kind of plays it off where he's like, well, I mean, you're more than welcome to, uh, but, you know, it doesn't hold a candle to what they have at the Commonwealth. And, you know, we get to see a little bit of a warning, I guess, to Rick, where he's like, you'd be surprised, uh, looks aren't all, uh, all they're cut out to be. And so I think this gives, uh, Rick kind of, you know, a grasp on the situation of how high tensions are, uh, between the two different classes in the Commonwealth. Uh, and at the very issue, at, oh, I'm sorry. At the very end of the issue, we get to see uh, Rick returning to his room and Dwight waiting for him. And Dwight basically saying to Rick, hey, I know you want me to step up and be a leader for the, uh, the saviors, but I just couldn't get behind that role there because I didn't see it working out because of, you know, the type of people the saviors are. But he, you know, kind of talks to Rick and says, look, uh, you know, it's different now because this is a place where I can really see the people are good. They have good intentions. They want to strive for better. And I think I can, you know, sharpen that, uh, edge, so to speak, and really rally them behind to where we can make something together. And, you know, Rick's picking up that, you know, Dwight means that we would have to get rid of the people in charge of the Commonwealth. And so he just flat out tells them, no, we're not going to do that. And it ends with Dwight being like, what do you mean by no? Which, you know, Rick's a pretty straightforward guy. I think you can basically answer your own question, Dwight. But, yeah, so this is where I kind of mean that we get a little uh, bit from that previous panel of Dwight talking with his girl. I believe that's where it was stemming from because, you know, we get to see Dwight, uh, you know, not afraid to take out these people in order to... I guess, in a sense, liberate uh, the people that are oppressed, which, uh, for my rating real quick, I do want to say this is a really great issue. Uh, we had a lot happen. I think this is the first issue where we got some high stakes in. Uh, well, maybe not high stakes, but just, you know, actual things uh, going off. And so for that, if you guys read this issue by issue or you like to read it issue by issue, I would say this is a definite uh, worth picking up. It's uh, really good. We get to see a lot of interactions. It does feel a little um, uh, short, but it's just because there's a lot of gears turning at this point. Um, I mean, like I said, there's not any huge like battles going off yet. So if you're somebody that really only likes to pick up an issue for that, then you might want to wait off. But to me, I think it's definitely an issue worth picking up. Uh, although, you know, they're four bucks, so uh, read whatever is, you know, most easy on your wallet. Because uh, 
it's it's hard keeping up uh, when they're that expensive. And I can definitely relate to that. Uh, but getting on to my speculation, there's two things I think they can go. One, you know, uh, I feel like this is more the obvious route because it's basically a reverse of um, what happened when Rick first got to Alexandria, you know, uh, back when Rick first came to Alexandria, we had him being like, we can just take this place over. They already got everything set up for us. We'll just walk in here, make a few adjustments, and it'll all be good. And then we had people in his group being like, no, Rick, you know, let's not do that. We don't want to, you know, kill people. We're not those, we're not that type of guy. And in this, we kind of see the reverse of that where Dwight's taking more of Rick's older approach and then Rick's being more of the cool headed, like, okay, let's think this through. Uh, or, you know, just flat out telling him like, no, that's a terrible idea. Um, which, you know, if that's the case, then we might see, uh, you know, uh, Rick wanting to work peacefully, Dwight going behind his back, and uh, maybe even wanting to take over and betray Rick in the future. I think that's a little stupid of an approach, in my opinion, and I don't think it's really going to happen because they already had this moment of Dwight switching over to where he, you know, he was apologetic. He didn't, uh, he didn't want to kill Rick anymore. So I think it would be just not a whole lot of sense for you know. Dwight to go back and then be like, yep, I'm going to get rid of you, Rick. Uh, which was why I think maybe the, you know, the more feasible approach is that, you know, Rick understand, or he maybe not understands, but he respects the Commonwealth's decision to run things the way that they've been running things. And so he, uh, leaves the Commonwealth to do, you know, its own thing, but opens it up to the people there to be like, hey, whoever wants to come back with us, you're more than welcome to. We could always use, uh, you know, uh, a, another good neighbor that's willing to help out. Uh, which, beyond that point, I think it could splinter maybe to two different ways. Maybe it could uh, leave to where um, the Commonwealth uh, retaliates because Rick is taking, you know, their working man in a sense, and now the rich people are kind of forced to work by themselves or having to uh, lose certain areas of um, leisure, I guess you could say, and which in turn would lead to, you know, the Commonwealth maybe sending some troops and kind of military forcing or strong arming uh, Alexandria and Rick, which uh, if they retaliate against Rick specifically, this could lead to Dwight retaliating against the Commonwealth in Rick's defense. Uh, or maybe even revenge if something severely happens to Rick. Uh, or another splinter off of that is, you know, uh, Dwight disobeys Rick, uh, but not in a backstabby way, but more in terms of like, I'm doing this for, you know, you, Rick, and for the better of the communities we have back home. And then he starts a, a mutiny by rallying people to his cause to take over the I guess, more privileged people in the Commonwealth. So that's what I would think uh, is where they could go. I'm really curious to see. I did want to pull up that um, the new issue cover, because I like to talk about the new covers uh, when we're at this. Uh, this is 185, I know. I should just start having it put in the editing. I'm sorry. Uh, but this is issue 185, and it's called On Guard, and it has Carl standing uh, at the fences of the hilltop, and there being a, what looks like an explosion, it could be just like a firework or something, but uh, or maybe a flare, but we get to see that uh, that's popping off right above the house, uh, or the new um, uh, lodge mansion, whatever you want to call it, uh, at the hilltop. And so for that... Not really sure. It's always hard to, you know, predict them based on the cover because uh, The Walking Dead likes to sometimes do metaphor, uh, you know, metaphors through their covers. Or, you know, in this case, it was uh, kind of, you know, just one scene, but they kind of made it seem exaggerated. Or it could be like, you know, uh, two issues ago where it was actually something that was happening. So they're a little bit hard, you know, because they go all over the place. But I think this might be an issue where we take a break from the Commonwealth, maybe see where things are going on. Uh, maybe not so much Alexandria, but just the other communities, because we haven't really seen the Hilltop that much, or the Kingdom. Uh, and Oceanside, uh, I don't really think Oceanside's really too important to have anything go on. Or, you know, maybe we could have uh, Negan in this. I don't know. I think it'd be really good... Uh, I mean, I love Negan, but I think 
it probably would be best just to have Negan disappear for a while. Uh, so I don't really want to see Negan anywhere, but maybe there's some things to pop off. I really think it's maybe just uh, a false alarm. You know, uh, I think judging by the picture, if it's something that's definitely going to be in the comic, uh, you know, might just be like, hey, we see a herd of walkers. You know, we're going to put a signal. Well, I don't know why they'd put a signal flare for walkers because that'd probably attract them. But uh, so. Scratch that. But, you know, I some kind of threat that's not really a big threat, you know what I mean? Uh, so that could always be the case. On guard, you know, it could just be we're, we're seeing does Carl do stuff? <laughs> it could be just one of those slow burn issues. But anyway, guys, that will conclude this review of issue 184. And I will see you guys next month for uh, issue 185. Gosh, it's hard to believe that I have to wait that long for this. But... Hold on a second. If you guys are a fan of comics, we got stuff planning. Uh, I wanted to let you guys know. I'm giving you a little bit of a sneak peek. We are going to have a new comic that just came out by Skybound. It's called Die, Die, Die. That should be up tomorrow. And then we also have one that uh, one of you guys actually suggested to us on our Kill or Be Killed uh, video called The Realm, which uh, if, if you know who you are, uh, thank you, because I have been enjoying that series. We are going to be covering that here. Uh, not sure when, but do I would probably suspect next week is when we'll have that one out. Um, but yeah, that's just a glimpse, because we do have probably four or five more uh, comic series that we're going to be having up uh, in the next maybe two weeks. Uh, so look out for that because October is kind of our month of uh, reading and games. Uh, so be sure to check that out. Also, uh, if you want to follow uh, what we're doing on our main site, we have some Halloween-themed lists, horror. So if you guys are a fan of that, uh, do check the links in the description because you can find all of that there. And if you want to follow us on social media, go ahead and do that as well. But anyway, guys, we'll see you next time. Later, Addicts.